whatever makes you happy. You got volume there if you need it. But I think that's all the rules. <laughs> all the instructions, all the formal <laughs> yeah. bullshit, dude. Not Episode 34 with Dante Salerno. Am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Dude, one yeah. of these days I'm going to start asking names before <laughs> the podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, you just went right into it. Yeah, it's more fun. I, I like to live same. on the edge. Uh, I think no one can say my name either, so it's fun trying to guess other people's <laughs> names and... So what, what does the JT, I don't even know. Uh, I just know Peter. I know you as Peter JT. Dude, just people think socials. it's PJ. They have no idea. Yeah, it's Jones Torgrosa. So my okay. mom is okay. from Chile. She's Chilean. Uh, and she moved here when she was like 20. And her, or in Chile, they like, yeah, combine the last names. So they just oh, combined yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. But think. growing up, yeah, it's been a nightmare on like SATs. Any kind of standardized <laughs> test like was a nightmare. And yeah. just like people not understanding, like, yeah, all kinds of like, right. what is your family circumstance kind of thing? How did you end up? It's like, no, everything's pretty traditional. It's just, yeah, just weird naming a couple more names, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a mess. And I joke that like uh, in South American culture, they just kind of like add the last name on yeah. generationally. It's so I like to think that like there's actually like a hundred last names I could have. Yeah, <laughs> hyphen, like hyphen, hyphen, hyphen. <laughs> yeah, that's the ultimate marketing trick at some point <laughs> yeah. in time. Uh, we're not quite there, dude. I just uh, I just filmed four videos in ten days. I'm just coming off of that, so yeah. it's been this like crazy stretch, and I'm happy to just like be here chilling. I know yeah, we were talking before talking. the podcast that yeah, I'm excited to dive into the the journey of anthems and also all the good shit that came before because <laughs> I know yeah, always yeah. before the stuff we, we know of is is the more fun stuff <laughs> yeah. off the time. <laughs> Uh, starting off, I want to get right into the playthroughs. So I know you guys just put out playthroughs for It's Lover, and I wrote the other song name down, yeah. Plans. Plans, yep. Uh, I assume you guys filmed that right in your house? Yeah, yeah, we're just right in our living room. We just moved all the couches and shit out of the way. <laughs> Hell just, yeah. Mark came in. He has all, like, the camera and, like, mm -hmm. the lights and stuff, so he just lit it up and got all the shots. And, yeah, me and Sean <laughs> just sat there just playing the songs over and over. Hell yeah. yeah. How many takes we talking? Uh, it was maybe, like six of each or like it was a few from like each different angle mm -hmm. so it's maybe like three for each different angle something like that that adds so up by the end it's like i don't want to play these songs anymore it's great practice though yep. it's just over and over but <laughs> just yeah. for you too yeah yeah, yeah. uh that actually becomes a long night then too it's always the issue with playthroughs and yeah with single camera playthroughs at that it's like it's great to have multi-cam but it's not practical it's not realistic for most people yeah so you end up doing this thing yeah we're playing the same song eight yeah. times in a row <laughs> and then trying to do two in a night because it's convenient yep uh damn but they all come together great i think the uh what was my oh my first question there uh you weren't singing in the playthroughs and i noticed that oh, and yeah, i was yeah. wondering like was was it harder not to sing i feel like it must be for me as a as a terrible guitar player it'd be impossible to sing and play guitar but i feel like once you develop those two muscles like simultaneously it'd be weird to like do one and not the other it's a, a little like i just played it a few times mm -hmm. just to make sure because it is like almost that muscle memory thing You're like yeah. i know i'm doing this here so when i say this my hand goes there mm -hmm. so just a quick playthrough before we went just to make sure but yeah it was pretty it was the uh, it was fine yeah. why not sing along uh i don't know <laughs> i guess <laughs> the thing I, I i wish um is we did like a a lead playthrough too mm -hmm. and had that but yeah i don't know maybe i should have sung along huh but i don't know <laughs> i don't know if there's a right something to keep answer. in mind for the next I figure i guess we figured just guitar playthrough so we'll just like keep it at that yeah but yeah not a bad idea though i i honestly I'm had no idea, idea and i don't know why you would sing because i guess then it's another thing to track and like another layer of like bullshit to take care of yeah. or simulate um but I don't know. Yeah, I was really intrigued by this idea of like, is it harder than to yeah just play the song without singing? Just focus on this one yeah, thing and probably. be stuck in this. Yeah, what do no. I do with my hands? Kind of thing. Yeah, it's the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> what do I do with my mouth? <laughs> just keep it closed. Uh, the other thing there, uh, obviously, the dog is a key part of oh, those yeah, playthroughs. Yeah. We can't have a playthrough without a dog intervention. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's Dee Dee. That's my dog. That's your dog. We just had him. We had him in the float video. Mm -hmm. Then Sean made the shirt with him on it. So we just keep putting him in there yeah, yeah it's, it's cool to have him in the off. <laughs> like, is uh sean doing like all your graphic design yeah stuff? yeah hell yep. yeah i feel like all the show flyers like everything feels very like cohesive and put together it's yep. all in, like a very linear by, style by design love. yeah that's all sean and he just started like he just started doing it when we started this really and just like ran with it just crushing like the youtube videos and and i was like just, we're in the basement he's working on that i'm doing like some demo thing so that's I'm just fun. see it the whole time just grow and how quickly it grew. He's just like, it's great. That's fun. Like, so you guys have your little content basement. Yeah, you guys yeah. Go it's like a little uh, music off. Yeah, yeah. A little Hell lab. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah how like finished? Like talk to me about the space. Is it like a finished basement? It's like this where it's pretty unfinished. Fini it's finished. Like okay. it's uh, carpeted and stuff like that. Yeah, it was like that when we moved in there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then I used to. It used to be my bedroom, and then once we started this, I was like, we're gonna need some space. So I moved my shit up to a different room. That's sick. We just use that for music now. 
Is that yeah. like a nightly thing that you guys are there, or you guys not like, not nightly, but we'll we'll end up down there a lot for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool to have the the two of you in the same space. I think band members always struggle to have the the communication and the the yeah just lining up schedules, and you guys have yeah. that freedom built in. Yeah, it's nice to have just someone to bounce stuff off to without having to like go to my phone, send a demo, and be mm-hmm. like, "What do you guys think of this?" And he's just right there, just be like, "Do you like this? Does this suck?" Like, I don't, you know, I don't think the other piece there is in a band, it's hard to know how hard your band members are working sometimes, where I assume in the context of demo and the context of graphic design, like, you guys just see the final design. You don't know all the other bullshit that went into making that design. Yeah, I feel yeah. like having you guys in the process together makes it then easier to to bounce off oh, each other yeah. and stay motivated because you see the other person going through this bullshit yeah. as well. Especially in the beginning, like, because that's, uh, you even see, like, his workflow just got better as we <laughs> went, like, before there's so many layers and stuff, he's like, I have five copies of this. And now it's just, it's one, it's clean, it's boom, boom. And it looks great. And Hell it's yeah. like, I, yeah, I got not, no notes for you. <laughs> You're good. It's awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. And are you demoing the audio you said? Uh, yeah. I us- yeah. I usually just make like a framework of like the songs and then I'll send them out. Like I want everyone to write their parts. So Sean will write his parts and then Mark will write his. Mm-hmm. Mine's just like a, a simplified mini drum, but then just my guitars, just kind of like a framework for it like mm-hmm. that. And are these like, uh, like for the EP that's out now, Northeast Disease, am mm-hmm. I getting that right? Uh, are these songs that were made just for anthems? Were they something that were kind of in the in the pipeline forever and then got brought to Amazon? The anthems, what's that? These process? were just for anthems. So I was writing a little bit before, just kind of on my own during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I did the the pandemic EP thing. I was yep. like, well, might as well do this. Absolutely. And like yeah. halfway through, it was like, I don't know what I'm like. I'm not a producer. I don't, I don't know how to do this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, once, as soon as anthems got going, it was like, I'd been out of a band for so long, and I just figured it was done. So it's kind of a hobby now. Yeah. What, as soon as it got going, I was like, "Let's fucking go!" And mm-hmm. just started just writing songs. Like, I probably we probably wrote like fifteen, and then we probably didn't start using any of them till like the tenth one. So like the first nine were just there, but it are just started them, going. Is there any chance of them coming out as like bonus tracks? Is that a or is there an interest in them like getting repolished, or there, are those dead and old to you? There's some there like I've I've gone back now that once we put it out, like just went back because I like, kept everything, all the old ones. Mm-hmm. So there's some yeah like parts in there. I was like that's like a little better than I thought it was. Like try and bring it back and just get it going. Yeah, for sure. Isn't that funny how like you you make the thing and I don't know for me in videos it's six months or so after that I or maybe three months after I look back and go dude that sucked. I fucked that whole thing up. This whole Whole yeah. color grid is bad. The concept was dumb. And then by like six months to a year, I can go, oh, wait, no, there's actually something there. Yeah. And it's a weird corner to turn where like you, you love the thing and then you hate it. And then somehow, you know, coming full circle back to it. And it's weird with these songs when you say the same thing of like, yeah, at some point you threw them away. At some point they weren't the six that made it to the EP or yeah. five. I'm sorry. I don't know the track numbers. No, yeah, that's right. Um, six. But but yeah, and now you can kind of come back to them with fresh eyes and be like, wait, there was something in this pile of shit. Yeah. That I wasn't it's proud like of it's like sleeping on it just for like six months, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, and but it's yeah. weird how much of those can like sit in our brains too. Like I'm always shocked when I dive into that old idea, how much of it still exists in my brain. And it's like a, I don't know, a pathway that I remember taking. Yeah. There's definitely like parts in some of those old ones, like through lyrics or just one little thing like that. I didn't even realize till after did make its way through, whether it's like one line that I kept going back to or something. So like certain things I guess did make, but it was kind of just cut them all up and piece in as we go with like that type of deal hell yeah. Oh, yeah so where does the anthems thing start so i know in the playthroughs we're talking about like the i love the branding of anthems and i think the whole idea has been consistent and that's through the music it's through the the marketing it's through the what's the copywriting with the fancy term of all the the other the yeah, slogans like and the bullshit. branding and all together yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, i think it's all been very consistent i think yeah through the playthroughs we see that same traditional blue with the orange accents uh where does it all come from i'm hearing you talk about writing anthems before we knew it as anthems but i assume that the idea of it this vision of it is something you've been also dreaming up for a while um a lot of like the branding came just kind of as we started going i i we landed on that teal color with float Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly how it came up. I think it might have just been Sean doing the artwork. Mm-hmm. And then it was from there. That, so that was the only song we had for a while. And that was a big thing that like Mark had too, was like that branding thing and the consistency of it. Mm-hmm. And it was get that color. And then the orange came with Post. This uh, was the second single. And from there, it was like, well, all right, so this is our scheme. We're going to just run with this and keep using that so it remains like all the same, Mm -hmm. but still do different stuff, but have that consistency there. I love that. Yeah, I want to touch on the float video in a second uh, with those the smoke cans that are so sick. But the the other piece of the branding, I think, makes so much sense of like the the teal and orange is uh, it's something that I think a lot of film people call like, uh, I don't know, cliche. 
But it's like once you stick with it, it's like, oh, no, this isn't, we're not playing with a trend. This is our identity, and that makes it cool again. Where instead of just being a thing where it's like, oh, this is cool now, and in six months we're cool the next thing, it's like, no, these are guys, this is it. This is what they are. This is what we're going to get. Yeah. Uh, and I think it also pops up in the lyrics. It pops up in all kinds of shit you're doing, not just like the, the physical presentation of it. It's embedded in the DNA of it, which I think is cool. Yeah, that's a, a cool way to put it, like DNA. Yeah, anyway. yeah, we try to keep everything tied together, mm -hmm. like keep it all kind of one thing. Without it being like boring though, you know, like you switch yeah. things up enough, but keep it that consistency. That How much anthems thing. can you switch stuff up? And I think uh, that's a hard question to answer. It's a bullshit question, but uh, <laughs> it, it's one of the, yeah, I, I see this with bands a lot where it's like you pick this identity and then it's like, well, what if we want to turn left and how much can we turn left? And yeah, is that a problem you've guys have run into yet? I think that's something I, I'll tend to do more mm -hmm. or something. Like I'll be one to be like, what if we change all this? Blah, blah, blah. And sometimes I think like they do a good job of reeling me in. Mm -hmm. It's like, cause it works, right? Like there'll be a time, like down the line, different releases, like then you switch up the colors and stuff. But like, it's, it's kind of trying to like split it up in like eras kind of. So like we're in the Northeast disease era right now. That's basically. cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's smart too of the, the slow and steady approach there. I think it's very uh, appealing to be like every six months we got to rebrand. We got to keep up. And it's like, no, pick a thing. And in 18 months, pick a new thing or two years, whatever the timeline is. But like, yeah, I think it's smart to set yourself in stone temporarily instead of saying forever for 10 albums. Yeah, that, <laughs> what that's, that's what freaks me when you start thinking of is this forever. And it's mm -hmm. like I like everything, but everything is after a while is something fresh comes along. At some point, that, a green era. Is gonna yeah, come yeah, 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 yeah. You can have your Eras tours and sell at Gillette Stadium <laughs> three <laughs> times in a weekend and all will be great. Yep. Uh, that's, a, that's a fun idea to imagine <laughs> three of you guys in the middle of Gillette. Yeah. What's the biggest show you've ever played? Um... We played, we opened for uh, Motion City Soundtrack Hell yeah. at Toes on their uh, the Commit This to Memory. It was like a 10 year, I think. I think That's it got sick. pushed back because COVID. But yeah, mm -hmm. that that was definitely it. That was, was like. It sold out Toads? I don't know if it was sold out, but it was definitely the biggest crowd we played to for sure. That's I cool. mean, they weren't, they were there for Motion, but still just. They were there. That was, <laughs> that's the biggest thing. In this band and anything I've ever done. So that how, was pretty sick. How different was that from playing at BFW? So you obviously you've played plenty of shows to 10 people, 20 people. That's kind of the, the norm for most people. Yeah. This exception sure, yeah. of a you know a thousand-ish people is a pretty rare experience. Yeah, yeah this was different? like an anomaly for sure. But it, it's almost a little more comfortable in a way. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it's like a little less personal almost. So I'm not like looking at like specific. It's just like a bigger crowd of people. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel more relaxed. I don't know if that's like for everybody. That's you would think a bigger crowd is like worse, but it it makes me feel a little better. I'm There's more eager to like. All right, well we gotta we gotta fucking go because like it's like a big one, but. It I, is it to some degree that in a thousand people you can't really see one person, but when there's <laughs> twenty people in a room, you know each other? Yeah, yeah. So yes, like more like kind of just focus in on like one person or, so, or mm -hmm. like just something, and it doesn't yeah. like. It doesn't take much to get me uncomfortable. <laughs> so sure. like, like anything like that. For some reason, the bigger ones just seem to sit easier with me. I assume with the the twenty person example, it's also like it's not the person singing along. Unfortunately, isn't the person who catches your eye. I assume it's the person in the back of the room with their beer and their back to you, and it's like, who? Like yeah, that's the person yeah. that you fix it on. Just tell me why you hate this. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do to make you turn around? Yeah, at least yeah. look at me. Just yeah. look at me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that like generally true that you get caught on the, the little stuff and it's like, no, if we could just be present and focus on this person, be better, but that's not who you get stuck on. Yeah, yeah. And it's more of that, yeah. And just one thing and be like, oh, <laughs> what's, what's yeah. going on over there? <laughs> but yeah. Interesting. On the um, uh, music video, float music video. Uh, those orange like cannons. That's oh, that's a uh, post. 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 I apologize. Yeah. No, worries, uh, no worries. Where does that idea come from? Is that one of your? That is Mark. Mark okay. is like with the video stuff. Mark comes to like a plan. Like he'll ask like what the lyrics are, like concepts and stuff, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about that. But then like shot list stuff and everything. That's all him. So yeah, he bought like this big box, like twenty five pound bag of like orange powder, and then these orange smoke grenades. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the powder like. There's shots like we just have a solo cup like off screen and we're just whipping that it at whoever's yeah, in front. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, during the shots with the smoke grenade, there's one like someone's always in the back laying down with it. Like, <laughs> like in Mark's shot, I'm there's a behind the scenes video type <laughs> of thing where you can see me just squatting down in the back, like 
<laughs> like, I'm like, is this gonna blow? <laughs> like, is this gonna blow up my hand? And it was cold as hell, and you guys were in like a public park, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a park right down the street from us, and <laughs> I just went down there one day. There's a big ass field. It's kind of off from like the path and everything. Okay. So we were just like. Just go down there. Hopefully, was, no one says anything. We'll you were the one we'll who said, it. "This is the plot." Yeah, yeah. He just went. It's like, yep, this is it. <laughs> That's this is crazy. It. It, it's one of those that, like, as I've been playing videos since learning that, that I've looked back and be like, maybe I'm not going to get kicked out. Like, if this was possible, then where else could I feel that? <laughs> yeah. That's fun. We were worried about it, but yeah, it just uh, went real smooth. That's cool. That you guys have things like kind of compartmentalize. You have Mark on the video. You're handling the audio stuff, and then Sean's handling like, the graphic design, which is kind of a third, I guess, intermediate department or give me more day to day department of all yeah, the tour yeah. stuff, the show stuff. Uh, that's sick. Yeah, it's definitely it's we kind of divvied things up. Well, I don't even know if it was really set out to be like that. Mm -hmm. I think it, roles just kind of fell, in the, and it's just what everyone was good at. Like that, Mark's job is like doing video, like mm -hmm. editing video and stuff. And Sean just went and ran with the graphics, so it all just kind of came together and started working like that. Hell yeah. Have the three guys been friends for a while? Like, where does this thing start? I feel like you... So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I met Sean in sixth grade when our, our two towns, like our schools, came together for middle school. Good times, yeah. So yeah, I met him there. That's like, he got me into like Blink-182, like we both started playing guitar around the same time. So I've known him forever, like, and then Mark, I was in a band with... My last band that I did probably like 10 years ago with him, it was my cousin's band and he was the drummer. So I joined that, played lead guitar there for a little bit. And then that kind of just fizzled out too. As and it then, does. Yeah. 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 Um, hell yeah, dude. Um, I forget why I was bringing up the, the origin part there. Oh, uh, when, when Anthem came to be, I think you guys came, hit the ground running really quickly. It was a really fun thing to watch you guys. And it still is. It feels like you are every month upping the amount of output that you guys are doing, which has been insane to watch you do. But it felt like you guys hit the ground running very quickly. Was Anthem something that was cooking up for a while in your brain? Like it feels like there was a year or two of Anthems before anyone knew it was a thing. No. So we started, so what happened was, Probably in the summer of 21, I was I was just messing around with like drums and I'd just kind of jam with my cousin once in a while. He played guitar mm -hmm. and sang. And then one night, like, so me and Sean kind of, we hadn't talked for a while. I hit him up. I was just like, hey, man, do you want to just come fuck around and play bass? And like, as soon as he said yes, I was like, kind of gear started turning. Mm -hmm. I was like, what if we hit up Mark, got him in, got him on the drums, and mm -hmm. then I went on the guitar and then we just started going from there. And we had like my cousin ended up moving to South Carolina, so that was like a lineup change pretty early. Mm -hmm. But that was in the summer of twenty one, and then we kind of call like our official start date like November, like December twenty one. So like, but before that though, it was like I was like I had already given up and made peace with like the band thing's just done. It just it's never worked out. I'm just getting beat down by it, and so I gave up on it. It was like just like it's gonna be a hobby type of thing now. Mm -hmm. But it was like once, as soon as that came together, it was like, there's a shot here. I don't care what it is. I thought it was like just for fun, but let's do it. Let's like fucking do it. So there wasn't a, just until it just came together like mm -hmm. that, there wasn't too much like music stuff going on otherwise. Interesting. It's uh, what you call it. Uh, I had a great thought there. <laughs> I totally <laughs> forgot in the process it's of the thinking. Worst. It's the uh, worst. Uh, Damn, dude, one of these days my brain's going to like hold thoughts while I'm talking and it's going to be the best day of my life. And yeah. until that day, I'm going to be chasing fucking dandelions in my brain all day. Like, what was that again? Um, fuck, dude. I have no idea what that was. Um, we were talking about um, like, uh, stuff like before anthems, like was something happening before anthems? Oh, kind of. uh, what was beating you down? Uh, so uh, obviously, yeah, the industry is so tough and I feel like it's, there's a lot of normal things. But yeah, in your case, what was, what was beating you down? Well, wasn't, I guess... I never really made it far into it with anything. Mm -hmm. So it was just like any band, it was either we were about to record or we were getting ready to. Like, I had never put out anything else before this. It always just kind of blew up in some way after a while. And it was just like, fuck, dude. Like, I, how many times are we going to do this? How many I, times were you like close? Like, it feels late in your life to be oh, just putting something out now. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's a weird thing. It's like, I'm 30. Like, like, my last band, I was like early 20s. So, yeah, it's, that's been a little weird. But, um, yeah. Uh, 
Sorry, what? No, <laughs> Wait, what, what, what I remember my thought. Uh, how freeing it, uh, my, my good thought from earlier that I copped out of, or totally forgot on and then copped out <laughs> of, was uh, uh, it's so much like easier when you free yourself and let this thing be a hobby. That there's something, and I've noticed this in the podcast, I've noticed this in music videos, that like when I'm really trying, it's dog shit. Like I feel like I just can't make the idea. And somehow in that freedom of letting myself go, no, I don't care anymore. I'm just going to like do the thing and let something come out of me. That it's so much easier and freeing, and I'm kind of hearing you say that with the band stuff. It's like you you tried for a long time to make it happen, and then in giving yourself the freedom to be like, no, I don't care. I'm just going to make what I want to make. That now it works. Now there's a freedom there that yeah, allows to thrive. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, the the only difference is I did I did care. Like it sucked. I was mm-hmm. like, fuck. Like I'm yeah. just. I guess we're just playing acoustic guitar in the room now, like mm-hmm. that type of deal. But it is that like with this one, like when we started, it is that type of thing. Like when you're not like worried about it or you don't care. And mm-hmm. it, cause it had been so long since I'd done it. And it was Sean too. Sean was in the same situation where it was like, okay, I guess this is over now, which is even worse. Like, cause he's been, he's done like a bunch of things. He's like, we lean on his experience a mm-hmm. lot for this stuff, but yeah, it is. Um, it just, it, once the opportunity came up, it was like nothing felt better. Because it was like, holy shit, we've just got a chance to do this again. I thought it was just going to be uh, just grow old, fucking blue collar working just till I die type of thing. Yeah. And which, you know, probably like we'll still, I'm still doing that. And not to say like this will go anywhere, but just to have it, mm-hmm. just to have like the outlet in life is yeah. nice to have back. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a very wise statement. I think I always go to the sports analogy and for me, it's like most athletes retire, like, and in a lot of ways, retiring is the best thing you could have at the end of your career. And I think it's wise for us with music, for me, the music videos, it's like this, I can't make music videos at 65. Like I'm going to have to find something between now and then that is another version of this that I can also enjoy. And it's like, I don't know what that is. And I'm hearing you saying the band. So it's like, yeah, you don't always know what that is. We don't know where this music thing goes, but like, it's got to go somewhere, and I'm happy it's going here now. Yeah, so, yeah. It's 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 like obviously this like just being in a band. It's not like a long term. It's not a good financial decision by any means. But yeah. it's like this is like from sixth grade. That's like mm-hmm. this is just what I've been wanting to do. So it's happening now, and just not going to let it go till it goes, whenever it goes. Hell yeah! Uh, you meet Sean in sixth grade. Is that the start of you mentioned Blink? It's the start of playing guitar. It's kind of the start of it. Uh, before that, do you have any musical experience? Is that like your oh. your your bad friend on the other side of the tracks that gets you into <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, Sean's the one getting me into trouble. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, um, I'm so sure I, that hasn't changed at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's not much different now. <laughs> um, so it started. My dad bought an acoustic guitar. It was like around this time, really. It was probably like maybe fifth grade. It was like a year before that. Mm-hmm. So I just started playing that when he started learning. I just did like you know the normal. Smoke on the Water, Iron Man, the yeah. little like Nirvana stuff. Like Nirvana was big because he listened to it a lot. So like that was always one that stuck with me. But yeah, it was just that. And then Green Day was big. I hate, I didn't like Blink at all. Mm-hmm. And like, I remember Sean being like, dude, like, <laughs> oh, come on. So he gave me the self-titled. And I, I remember listening to it that night. I was like, oh, like I, I get. And they, they were my favorite band, like for my whole, like, Childhood from that point on. I will I will die on the good Charlotte Hill, and I've never oh. gotten a Blink-182 at Not all. a bad hill Somehow, to die on. Good Charlotte's there's a, great. There's a huge divide there, a huge ravine that I just can't <laughs> cross. It's so strange to me. It's just, yeah. Uh, um, I would have been the same if I just met Sean. <laughs> yeah, Sean got me. Uh, so at that point, you start learning yeah, the basics on the guitar. When yeah. is like, your first band? When do you start? Uh, yeah, does it become serious kind of immediately for you? Are you obsessed with it immediately? When does this thing start to become more of your time? Pretty much. I think there were like l- a couple little bands. Uh, one, I don't remember if Sean was in this one. It was called Rad. R-I-D. I don't remember what the R-I-D stood for. Th- yeah. Thankfully, I don't remember. Hell then yeah. we had I one need to out. find out what R-I-D I, stood for. I gotta ask him and see if he remembers after. It's probably something just horrible. That's like, why I need to yeah. know. It's probably pretty terrible. Yeah. I'll find out. I'll let you know. Because we have to get that out there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then uh, there was one right after that called like Keep Quiet, Keep It Quiet. He was in that too. And then the one that I did the longest was a metalcore band in high school called Send Your Regards. It was where we did like a, just played like the ATC in the space. And like that was kind of, I think of that as like my first like real one. It wasn't real, we were 16, but like that was yeah. the first introduction to meeting all the people that are in like this music scene and stuff now. So I need to taste of the way that things work in the, yeah, the yeah. industry underbelly yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I assume that somewhere in there is where you start to appreciate the value of like, con- like, 
I guess what do you learn from that those failed band experiences? So, yeah, there are so many bad bandmates in there. There's so many bad shows. I like, yeah, I'm not asking you to name which one of your guitarists stole money from everyone, <laughs> yeah. but like that happens. That's the thing. But it's like, what when you're approaching anthems, what do you take from that that now makes anthems more successful? How are you, yeah, incorporating that and not letting that happen again? It, I think it is like the main thing is like the interpersonal stuff, yeah. like between each other and like. The communication, and that's just like anything at this point in life is something like the, how much communication matters and just mm -hmm. any kind of relationship type of deal. Yeah. But it's making sure like everyone's happy with what they're doing and like everyone has a say and everything. Like it should be like a group effort, like no like dictatorship, no like ego type of deal, which is like things happen. It's like easy. It happens a bunch. Like it's, it, I've done it when I was younger. You just get a little bit of an ego on you because you're like, I'm in a band. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, but it's, it's like chill out, dude. It's as it, that's a benefit of the one benefit of being older in it now. Yeah. Is I've just had a little more time to not be a shithead. So like <laughs> yeah. it makes it easier to, to do this and work with people and stuff. For sure. I, that's an interesting part of being in a band that I can't quite imagine where I think there's a lot of compromise that has to happen in a band, obviously. And like you're, you can't just write the song you want to write. If you just wrote the 10 Dante songs and like, yeah, it's not anthems. It's not everyone else. It's not fair to everyone else. You can't. You mentioned earlier that you let them write their parts. And like, yeah, good. That's a good way to include everyone. Make sure yeah, everyone yeah. has their own tastes incorporated. For me in video, it's like I really like that a band goes, here's the ballpark. And then you <laughs> you do everything from there. And I like not having to compromise or agree or just like, yeah, I think I do my best when someone says, you tell us kind of thing. And yeah, not like yeah. a, I don't want to be tell us everything. But yeah, give me some parameters. Give me a world to work inside of. And then I can populate and I guess in a band it's similar, but it's also like, no, you still have to meet other people inside of that ballpark and like negotiate. And that is something that, I don't know, I guess I would adapt if I had to, but I, I really value that. And it seems really tough to have other people so intimately involved in stuff. Yeah. It, it's, I guess like a give and take, luckily, like for us, there's really not much, like we pretty much all agree a lot <laughs> of times. And I like with the songs too, it'll be like, like I'll like beg. So like, if it sucks, like, please tell me, tell, like, I don't want, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's good, dude. Yeah, like the typical, like, you know, if, it, if there's something that could be changed or like any ideas, I'm always like, let's hear him. Mm -hmm. uh, is Mark's uh, experience closer to yours or closer to Sean? Where I think Sean, for context, for anyone who's not listening, has done many bands. He's played a lot of tours. He's toured the country. He's played, yeah, nothing full time, but definitely has done a lot of stuff. Is yeah, Mark yeah. kind of closer to your spectrum? Yeah, of, yeah. I think, I think his last band was that one that we were in together. And I think that was around like 10 years ago now. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I think there is something there to be said of uh, being able to learn from all the failures and said, and I'm sure in those the, in that decade since your last failed band, you had other friends and other failed bands. And there is something to be said there, just like learning all the things not to do, all the traps, all the managers not to give 30% to up top or whatever the <laughs> yeah. dumb, yeah, we'll pay you two grand a month and you can book us at a VFW once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Kind of bullshit yeah. contracts that people get sucked into. Those are the things like that's where like, cause Sean just has more experience than mm -hmm. not like, it's nice to have that like, you know, there certain things is me and Mark just don't know from just lack of experience. And that that's been helpful, too. But it is that like with that, just as far as like working together, for sure, it's a lot of time to think of what went wrong with things like that and what could be done better and how to avoid just those blow ups where it's all of a sudden a bunch of time and money are gone. It's like. Is there one that comes to mind as an obvious thing that you've moved aside? Obviously, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus or, yeah, uh, dive too deep into the business. But, yeah, is there an opportunity that you were like, oh, we don't need a manager or something that uh, stuck out as a conscious choice? Nothing has really come up like that yet. Um, yeah, no, just I get it's I get more just like um, little things. It's like uh, you want to play like uh, shows in like the same city, like twice in a row too often like mm -hmm. it's like not, things like aren't huge you know, just little things that help kind of you know Keep just just do going. band just the band <laughs> type of thing <laughs> i know i feel like there's so many rules to it sometimes i was just like i had no idea <laughs> like, it's nuts yeah there's a lot that was a big thing just realizing how much goes in like it's not just for writing these songs and playing them and it's like all the social media and like the networking and stuff like all the other things that come with it it's but funny. It's fun, but it's funny. I think in high school, the the band guy was stereotypically like the idiot. Like that was 
I don't know. It's, yeah, it's me. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's in the same like jock categories. Like you are, we accept that you are good at this thing, but you must be dumb in a lot of other ways. <laughs> and the more I talk yeah. to bands, it's like, no, there's a lot of intelligence that goes into this and a lot of just the planning and yeah, the kind of back ends that you're talking about that doesn't get seen or credited or isn't even like a conscious choice all the time of like, yeah, we can't play the Webster every weekend. It'd be great, but it's done, no one wins in that scenario. Yeah. And yeah. They wouldn't book you every weekend. Also. Like, <laughs> yeah. they, they wouldn't indulge yeah. it either. But like, yeah, that same idea is valuable of like, what is a good path for us? Uh, and that's a really hard choice to make because the, the good path isn't always the first one. It's not always the easiest one. It's not the most convenient, the most accessible. Like, yeah, there's a lot of bullshit to overlook and have this big macro plan in mind. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely been like a, a learning experience for all of us. And but that's like been part of the fun, too. And being open to be like, yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm doing right now. So like very like I've learned a bunch just from yeah. recording and like meeting other people in the scene, just playing shows and just everything. So Hell it's yeah. been fun. Uh, tons of shows coming up, dude. What, uh, what? I guess for starters, anyone listening, what are the shows coming up? Where can people buy tickets? Is there anything? I'm not ending the show, but just, yeah, quick quick touch there. Uh, September 1st at the Beerix is one. They could grab tickets from us or any of the bands on it. It's a uh, so it's $12 presale. And then there's a there's like two more in September. They're all in, in the CT area. But oh, yeah. um, Sean just put up a show fire. On the Instagram is Anthem's band. Looks great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they check that out, and they're all on there. I've been loving watching all the show stuff. Uh, you mentioned kind of being on stage now for the first time in a decade. What's different now on stage? So when you were when you were eighteen, there's yeah, I guess the piss and vinegar is the classic <laughs> sentence. But what is now that you're mature? I guess that means you could be more jaded and just over it, or I think maybe more grateful and more appreciative of all the little pieces of it. Definitely not jaded, just because like. It's it's hard to take this for granted now because I went so long without it. I think, mm-hmm. but it is also when I was younger, it was easy to go on stage and just not be self aware at all and just kind of <laughs> act like a fool. Mm-hmm. Like you want to go up there and like let it all out and everything, but it's a little too much. Like when I'm younger, <laughs> like surely I was like a, just a teenager in a metalcore band. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> like, like. Texas in July, like <laughs> punching the ground, <laughs> like my hand hurts after. It's like don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> Twelve people. In the yeah, 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 yeah. It's stuff like that. It's like you don't need to do that. You yeah. still want to move around. So like, just being a little smarter and not being like an asshole up there too. Being like fuck this, blah blah blah. Like just just dumb shit. Just being a kid. That's one experience that I haven't had that I I would have liked to is playing a show in some capacity where it's like i've i've been uh on the filming end of a music video so i've faked guitar enough to be in a music video and to make that happen and like i uh, i think that was a valuable thing of just learning what it takes to perform and learning that like playing the song isn't really relevant to what i'm asking you to do on camera there's a much different performance that i'm interested in that has very little to do with the eighth fret like, I just, <laughs> yeah. It just, yeah it's not the thing i'm most interested in uh, and i think it's a good learning experience of like yeah what i'm interested in also like i feel like i have no musical ability and i think i was able to fake it well in the music video which to me then is like okay so everyone can do it like I, this is not my <laughs> thing and if i can figure it out and be in my room and look in the mirror and figure this thing out then like anyone else can uh, and i think it's a valuable thing i think playing shows would have been a valuable thing that i'm it's hard to imagine me finding my way on into that situation now do you uh, play anything at all or did no. you try or just just wasn't uh, you just knew? I can play guitar a little bit. The, okay. The, uh, actually, Sean Vogel filmed a guitar cover of me it's, back yeah, in the day. Yeah, that's right. Um, but that. yeah, my my short story or the simplest version of it is that I was playing guitar and then I started filming guitar covers myself and realized I liked filming the covers and hated learning the song and the guitar part. So I was like, oh, I probably could like outsource the, the performance part yeah. and just do the computer <laughs> part and things can work out there. Uh, so now I would like to learn drums is the other pe- thing that I feel like I have no experience with that I would like to be more comfortable with. Like, I just, I don't even know the Tom from the snare from like, it's just, it's all four and the rides and the crashes. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Just I, start. I gotta, yeah. I've been looking just, into buying just start an and then like, yeah, especially now, like YouTube, yeah, anything you want to know. It's just a matter of if you have the time to put in, just watch the videos and then put the practice. But yeah, if you want to do it, just do it. Because once, like, once it gets going, once you just kind of feel things start to be like, yeah. oh shit, okay, like you this. I but, feel like I have no rhythm. Drums. I've <laughs> said before that, like, I feel like I could sit in a room for five years and like become Jason Richardson. Like, of course, it's never gonna happen. Of course, that's like a huge goal. But like, it feels possible in some way like i can play enough guitar it's like okay i think if i sat down for 10 hours a day like eventually that would be possible with drums it's like <laughs> no way like i feel like i can sit <laughs> in a drum kit for every day of the rest of my life and still have nothing to show for it. watching a drummer is create like 
I don't know how they move as fast as they do sometimes. Like just the wrist. I'm like, doesn't that, like <laughs> none of it makes that any doesn't sense. Doesn't hurt. Like <laughs> how are you going so fast? Like yep. yeah, it, drums are. It's the most fun thing for me to watch. I I love watching it. It's it, I, I'm definitely I stick to guitar for sure. Like <laughs> yeah. playing, but drums are sick. Do you play drums at all? I say you like you mix, and I assume that or you're uh, demoing stuff. You're writing MIDI drums, so I assume yeah, you yeah. have some fundamental understanding. I, I know enough, to, yeah, where I can like put like beats together and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. As far as like if I had to like play a show drumming, I don't I don't think that's happening unless you want everything off time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we can do that, but yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of bands doing it. So it's a pretty <laughs> popular thing. Just get the click uh, track. <laughs> hell yeah, dude. Uh, I was uh, not that I'm aware of it, but uh, Craig Reynolds from Straight from the Path was talking about bands uh, DIing their uh, kick pedals so the drummer's only playing like the top half of the kick oh basically <laughs> and I don't think he ever said what band it was but it was some festival yeah it's, I assume it's some real ass band that, that we're just not aware of that, that feels like cheating yeah <laughs> like a little yeah. bit that feels like cheating. I mean it's the same as the, the kiss is like 40 stack of cabs I guess it's even worse than that because yeah those aren't the sound doesn't matter but uh, yeah it feels like the same level yeah. of deception the stacks yeah those are crazy it's like it's, it's very loud <laughs> it's like it's loud yeah but yeah uh, you mentioned all the YouTube tutorial stuff. Uh, is that was that your guitar learning process? We mentioned that in sixth grade you get it. Was there lessons? Like how are you doing that? And then now with mixing, is it? Um, yeah. A lot of the guitar was just going on like um, just uh, tab sites, ultimate learning guitar. how to read. Yeah, yeah. Ult yes, ultimate <laughs> guitar. Yep, yep. I still go on it all the time. Just, Hell yeah. Yeah, just looking up Green Day, Blink One Eighty Two, those songs, mm -hmm. and just sitting there for hours like i couldn't do that now if i tried just sitting there for hours yeah. learning songs it's but it was easier then do i mean i'm glad it was because it helped but like, do you still like learn guitar at all are you working on like theory is there like yeah is that time it's not covering green day songs that's not your day-to-day <laughs> -day activity yeah. but uh are you practicing guitar or do you feel like it mostly just comes out through through writing mostly writing yeah yeah writing and then just playing the ones that we have now is practice but yeah theory is something I would like to get into and probably should just mm -hmm. it would make things easier. It's like, it's just one of those things. Like I know I should just sit down and do it, but when I sit down, then I just want to start playing. And I'm like, <laughs> so it just never happens. I have the same thing with video. Yeah. I think I would, I think it would do me well to sit down and figure out what makes the, I don't know, Christopher Nolan movie or Christopher Nolan, what makes a Michael or whatever. Your I'll videos just, come out great though. I appreciate I mean, that. I just Thank watched, you. um, insatiable, the half hearted one. Oh, that was yeah. a fun one. It looks sick. That was a real fun one. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a lot of stories there that we've, we've told some on the air and some off the air and I'm happy to share both with you afterwards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, but yeah, I think there is some like benefit there to getting into that theory, but I'm kind of with you of like when I sit down at the computer, if I get a good idea going, if I start doing something, it's like, uh, cool this is con like i'm i'm seeing this through this isn't a demo i can't just like make something for fun anymore it's kind of ruined this idea to yeah. just kind of stop 10 percent of the way in just for shits and giggles um i don't know I, do you do you have the same sense of like because i feel like i'm missing out i don't watch movies like i just I, it's not that i actively don't watch them i just don't care like it's just not something that i end up doing but i feel like i'm missing out do you feel like you're missing out by not studying theory are you kind of happy with it i think i can i can get by like mm -hmm. how I've been going, but yeah. there's almost no way if I learn those things. Like the most like simple way I think it would help is it would probably just take guesswork out. Yeah. Like I wouldn't have to be like just moving around being like, does this sound good with this? Mm -hmm. I would know because like where just notes and stuff like that type of thing. I think it would it would definitely help smooth things out and just help make me kind of smarter with writing and shit. But yeah. it's like what you said when. When when I sit when the motivation's there, mm -hmm. like and I'm sitting down, you don't want, I don't want to burn it on learning. Yeah. I want when that when it sparks, I want to go. Yep. So it's tough. Yeah, it's tough, and I don't quite know the answer because I think the flip side there is like again in my my sports analogy brain, it's like there are. Uh, I've been I'm getting into golf recently. I'm a terrible golfer, but it's been fun <laughs> to go out once a week and go for a hike on a golf course. Yeah, basically, yeah. And find it some looks golf nice. balls. Um, but it's like I'm I'm terrible at it, and I enjoy being bad at it. And there's uh, why did I bring up golf here? Um, <laughs> we were talking about right before this practice, uh, the YouTube the theory, stuff. like the theory stuff, the, like uh, sitting down and learning instead of just doing, there we go yeah, with yeah, golf. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, with golf, <laughs> I heard someone describe themselves as a field golfer and it's like, they are, they are successful. They're division one, like, you know, whatever successful amateur golfer. Um, but like they don't quite understand where their weight goes. They don't understand like the little stuff. They just know what feels good and they don't worry about 
putting the name on stuff. It's just like, I've done this enough times that I'm going to keep doing it. And I wonder with theory, if there's a similar thing of like, if you learn scales, would it almost confine you? Cause now instead of just wondering what the next best note is, you're going, well, the C is supposed to come next. It's supposed to be a C sharp next. You know, yeah, like, so I you wonder, start adding rules to it, then it, it's, yeah, yeah. And I wonder with video, the same thing. It's like the, the rule of thirds is a very common one of like, mm -hmm. we want people not in the center of the frame, but kind of halfway to the left or halfway to the right. And it's like, well, if that's all, I, if everyone is always right there, then it's boring as hell. No one wants that. Uh, but also, if I'm totally ignorant to that rule, there's problems also. Uh, and I wonder with theory if there's a similar thing of like, if there's some diminishing return of like, if some you know, entry level arpeggios would be helpful at after a certain <laughs> point, if you're just yeah burdening yourself with too much knowledge. It it certainly could be. I I I think it is like it's kind of what you're saying if it's if it's not broke don't fix it type of thing yeah like there's the the alarm between that and then like i'm sure there's ways where it could make me better mm -hmm. but then just i the way things are going right now it's still fun and yeah i'm still able to write songs so i guess yeah it is, it is but yeah I yeah i still have that thing in my brain of like uh there's a part of me that would be happy to sit down and watch every movie ever and like <laughs> make a mental catalog of, you know, the 10 greatest directors. You got to watch every Scorsese film. I don't know who the fuck I could name a Scorsese <laughs> film on top of my head right now. But, like, watch everything he's ever done. Whoever, I don't know, the actor, director, he's an actor. Director? Whoever. Uh, yeah. He's I a think director. He, director, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Whatever. Yeah, he, yeah, he makes cameos, I think. He's in there. <laughs> Whatever yeah. the hell he's, he's ever done. Both. I know it's a name that I, yeah, it's like, if I watched that, then it would help me in some way. You know, if I could synthesize what makes these things great. But I just don't care. But it's like, am I... Am I doing myself a disservice by not sitting down and suffering through that in some capacity? Uh, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, it could be like the time spent watching all those movies could have been spent just doing stuff instead. So yeah. it's like, is yeah. it a waste? And there's know. so much learning by, and I assume it's the same with mixing of so much learning of getting halfway through the song and going, fuck, I need to make this sound and I don't know how. I don't know where, I just, I don't know. And that's yeah. when it's good to go on YouTube and figure out the tutorial, so to speak, and figure out what the YouTube, next step for is. For mixing, YouTube has been big for, and I'm not like a, I'm not a producer. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't like know how to mix, but I, I'm more just like trying to get good enough where when I send the demos out to the guys, it doesn't sound like dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, you can discern what's going on it and everything. Have you ever but, explored mixing for clients or mixing for stuff outside of you, or has it always just kind of been a garage band in your in your room kind of thing? Yeah, I didn't I didn't start ever doing any recording till like the the COVID EP. Thing. Interesting, and okay. it was it was garage band. Like I had tracked like just guitars, but like mm -hmm. as far as anything past that, like or what was involved in track, I have no idea. But so I've picked up some stuff, but it's still there's there's so much, and I'm just like. I don't even, I, I'm going to turn this dial maybe and turn this one down <laughs> and so see if maybe. that's what I want. No, yeah. it still sounds bad. Well, <laughs> let's keep turning dials. Like, but yeah, you go to the video, the, when I can get on the YouTube mm -hmm. without like being like, I don't want to do this right now. It always does end up helping. I always mm -hmm. pick up something from it. Yeah. But it's tough to just stop working on what I want to work on to do that. Uh, I always feel like I never pick up the thing I wanted to pick up. Like I go watch the video of, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's EQ, it's yeah, how to, how to cut this frequency. And then while I'm watching that, they mention a plugin that is for uh, e reverb and I go, Oh fuck, we do need some reverb. <laughs> and you get totally lost <laughs> yeah. in this process. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the YouTube is counterproductive. It is, that's that like the rabbit hole of it. Just the just trying to learn part. Yeah. Like I was trying to learn this and now there's yeah. like five other things I, just found out about <laughs> I, I want to know it's yep. like i don't know if i'm gonna learn any of them today <laughs> and I, I always think about that in the, the context of like an academic thing like i didn't go to school for photo i don't yeah there's i don't have an academic background but i think that would be the benefit of it right would be that they prevent those rabbit holes and go hey here's the first 10 things don't worry about getting caught in the thing but i don't know if that's uh that nurtures a creative and kind of self independent approach either. i don't know if it does so i went to school for graphic design, which yeah, okay. I regret now because it's like you can get all that information on you and then some mm -hmm. for way cheaper. Mm -hmm. But like it did it, so it was after like the band stuff was over. So it was like, how could I, how could I still be in like the music scene in mm -hmm. some way without music? And that just seemed like a way where it's you know, merch, album art, stuff like that. Oh yeah. So I just started doing that, and then pretty much as as soon as this started <laughs> i just like haven't done it since that's funny so i just have like this degree now and it's like but it, it i don't think i don't think i think it helped with the regimen of it for sure like it show, it gives you a starting point but mm -hmm. as far as like 
if you, I think if you want it and you want to just, if you want to do it and you sit down and watch those, you don't, I don't think you need school for stuff like that. And I think it shows too, with like your photos and videos and stuff. You, if you don't need school, if you put the time in it and just do it, like you can figure this shit out. I appreciate sure. that. Yeah. And I agree with you. And I think I'm, uh, I was just telling my parents the other night just about the, the social media for kids and the, the pros and the cons. And yeah, we've all heard of the conversation for yeah, the fifth yeah. graders on the TikTok and what's good and what's bad. Um, my favorite example there is, uh, Sean Dalkey mentioned that his, uh, I don't know what his son was trying to do, tie his shoes or something very simple. Uh, and Sean comes in the room and his kid is sitting there with YouTube open going, how do I tie my shoes? And it really struck me as like, oh, fuck. It took me till I was 20 to figure out that that was a thing that I, yeah, when I was in school studying psychology and it's like, I don't love this, but I think this camera thing's cool. Oh, I can just, I can learn that. And this kid is 16 years younger than I was. He's four years old or whatever. Yeah. Already figuring that out. And that's a powerful thing that like, yeah, TikTok's going to corrupt him and ruin him in other ways. But like, if we could just harness that. There's so, there is so much good on the internet too. Yeah. There, there is like, there's a com- side about that conversation, but it is like, think like, so are you like a sports fan? Uh, probably, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So like, think like just, so I like baseball mm-hmm. a lot and football, like how good like kids are now or even like skateboarding yep. if you see like a video like That's the, you didn't yeah. see like you saw like ryan sheckler Nigel houston like mm-hmm. little kids and it was rare for skateboarding now it's yeah. like it's a five-year-old doing like <laughs> something i've never seen before yep and it's i i feel like yeah. it is that because they have that and that's like that's sick like it's yeah. cool to have those things they want to learn it and then apparently like when you're a kid like you're supposed to be a little spongier mm-hmm. so they say so they retain yep. things so like there's definitely a lot of ways where it's it's pretty cool, very yeah. useful. But then sh- there's like the other stuff too, and all that. But yeah, yeah, all the fun stuff that everyone else has <laughs> talked about a thousand times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. it's funny. I as I watch podcasts now, like they start getting these conversations, and it's like, oh, I get it. It'd be so like, it's so <laughs> deep, like I uh, to anyone listening, I'm not gonna go into like the oh social media also stinks because, but like it's such an yeah. easy topic yeah. to yeah. get What's into. What's the effect and, of social media on kids? <laughs> it, well, the pendulum it. swing back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the pendulum. The pendulum. The pendulum. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Um, hell yeah. Uh, current goals for the band. So uh, I'm bad at setting goals for my business. And I think the my business and a band are often one in the same in a lot of ways and a lot of things we're trying to do. And yeah, shows and music videos are kind of interchangeable in a lot of ways. And it's me- measurements of progress. And, st- and yeah, you have some up and some down and some big and some small. And the, the goal is to just keep doing them. And yeah, there's mm-hmm. a lot of overlap there. Uh, what is now interesting for anthems? What is a, a goal you guys have set? Where are you guys looking ahead to in the future? Right now, I think we're just trying to just grow it, like especially mm-hmm. like the social media. Yeah. Like I know, like because it ma- like it sucks, but like it matters. Like sometimes just the snapshot of the follow count. Mm-hmm. So we're just trying to figure out how to like and just to push the EP because it feels like we've had it out now, but it's only we put it out in April. Mm-hmm. It feels like we've had it out forever. I yeah. thought about the other day, it's just out. So we're, that's why we're trying to play like a bunch more shows and just kind of grow it right now. Something. There will be something in the fall. Mm-hmm. I don't know when. Because it's already no been worries. pushed back twice, but there will be some kind of release in the fall. So that's that'll be the next thing. And that just 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 grow it and just mm-hmm. fucking head down and go. Just yeah. Hell yeah. What does growing the band look like? I, like I love the the social media stuff. I know you guys have had a lot of fun with reels, creative little shorts and skits. Try and to keep it goofy. Yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, has that been a, a contract that you guys are building on? Was like has the goofiness seemed like it was a successful strategy? Like yeah, what's what's worked and what's the plan for the future? I think so because it's a nice uh, like contrast. It's a offset to like the you know the sad boy music mm-hmm. shit. Like yep, um, and it just makes it more like you know we don't we're like not mean mugging in every photo. Like yep. more accessible. Like we're not trying to be like big tough guys up there. We're just like. So yeah, if we can like make people laugh and then connect in that way, and mm-hmm. then you like the music too, then yeah, I think it's we'll perfect. And if I'm being candid, I think it's uh, I, it feels self centered to give you a compliment because I think that's what I'm doing with the podcast. Also, is like I had the same thing of a page that's again similar to band stuff. It's like you had the singles, you would have had album art, you would have all this like professional stuff, and for me, it's music videos, photos. But nothing that says anything about me or what I like to do or who I am or what's going to happen when you meet me, when you come to my merch booth after a show, if I was in you know, the band example. Uh, and I think it's really smart that you guys were kind of leading into that same thing of like, we can't just be tough guys. Like, we have to have the cool picture on the rooftop somewhere, but like, <laughs> yeah, there yeah, has to be yeah. a, a personal element to make this thing work because otherwise we're just one in the same with yeah, everyone else. Yeah, then it's just like depressing. Mm-hmm. It's like, because like the lyric concepts like on the sad side and stuff, the music yeah. does helps like offset that too Mm -hmm. but it is that it's like we don't we don't want to look like like if we're at a show like 
you can't come up and like talk to us yeah. or like you have to feel weird. Like we just want to be friends with everyone, make as many friends as we can, mm-hmm. which has been one of the, the best parts about this too, yeah. is just meeting so many people through this and everything. That's cool. The show is like, it's, it's really, it's been a fun year and year and a half, something like that. I don't know, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. And more to come, of course. Um, Hope so. Hell yeah. That feels like a good place to wrap up. We got a couple more minutes here. Um, we're in the middle of something cool. My brain, I usually like to record in the afternoon, and I feel like by this time, my brain is just so <laughs> yeah, shot. Yeah, um, but that's that's the price we pay for glory. No. Um, <laughs> last question is uh, life outside of Anthem. So I, I joke that I'm terrible at having fun, right? Like, I, uh, this is what I do for fun. This is my off day. This is how I've tricked myself into being more social. And it's like, I'm never going to go to the bar. If you invite me to go out for a drink on Tuesday night, the night we're filming this, I probably would have said no, but this I'm happy to do. I'm happy to drink. Like, it's the same thing, but I could trick myself into doing this because it's still kind of work and kind of productive. Uh, what are you doing outside of anthems? Do you have trouble turning anthems off? Like, living with Sean, you guys are, yeah, always in this anthems yeah, mode. I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm definitely, um, like, an introvert. Yeah. So, like, so I'm the same, like... A lot of time, I like, I'll make it a point to try and like go out because a lot of times yeah. it just won't happen. Yeah. But it is like anthems has been like, kind of the thing that's like kind of got me out of the house again, like socializing again, meeting mm-hmm. the people again. So it really just has been that. Other than that, it like just just the mundane work, come home, fucking go to the gym, whatever. Just whatever was just boring things. Just, yeah. That's why it's the outlet of this. It just kind of improved a bunch of other things in life, that's really. Sick. Yeah. I've had the same experience with the podcast, yeah, and I think it's I think it's all testament to letting ourselves explore the thing we're interested in. I think there's something to, like, uh, for me, it's sitting at, at home in my room, like, playing video games, being on a computer. It's like, I'm just not giving myself the chance for anything good to happen. Same. I, and, I do it all the time. Yeah. All the time. I'll almost, like, isolate. <laughs> like, I, I live with Sean, yep. and he's being like, I haven't seen you in a week. <laughs> I'm just in my room. like It's comfortable. It's easy. Yes. And yeah. Sometimes it just, I've realized now, sometimes it just has to happen, mm-hmm. but it can't stay that way. <laughs> like, then yeah. that sometimes it can be like, all right, get up. Yep. Like, go out. <laughs> like, I have the same thing, and I'm uh, hearing you describe that, like, when you're when you're in the middle of something, it just becomes days of just kind of stuck in this cave. It's very <laughs> it's like, Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you... Uh, pulls the shades up. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> how do you, uh, like, break that up? How do you find life in that in that that time where you are like how much do you let yourself just get sucked into the thing and how much are you like now i have to go to sleep right now that i in the beginning like before the ep it was just go 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 mm-hmm. and be up too late i'd be sleeping through like not through work but i'd be showing up to work late because i was up too late before doing mm-hmm. that and at once we finished recording i think i just for like close to a month i was like okay just just nothing right now like mm-hmm. we're whatever had to be done shows we're doing those but like chill because I felt it. I think that was the first time I felt like the burnout. Yeah. And I didn't know what people were talking about with the burnout. It's a and weird I, feeling. Yes. Yep. I, I was like, oh, this is it. Like, there's just, I got nothing right now. Like, there's no ideas. There's no motive. I don't know where to mm-hmm. go with this. Just step back. And now, now I'm more conscious of it. So if, if I feel that coming, I'll be like, all right, it's, it's nine right now. Mm-hmm. Work, do one more hour and then stop. Go to bed. Like oh, just do I, like that. I love the uh, I got nothing phrase because that's always what it comes down to when I, it's like when I plan to work till five and it's two thirty and it's like you know I I literally have nothing. My my dilemma there is I think that that's also my body's reaction when I don't want to do the thing when I'm working on the project and it gets to that that muddy section. It's like I don't want to solve that problem. Yeah. And I've learned that if I clock out before solving that problem, then it's impossible to clock back in. And I've always had trouble balancing this. Like when is my body just like lying to me because I don't want to cross this bridge yeah and when is it yeah. genuinely like no i actually have nothing but you're right that when the when the genuine burnout strikes like oh there's no question like there, yeah it's, it's, a, it's it's not happening yeah i could sit there mm-hmm. but i'm i'm gonna maybe put up some just horribly subpar riff like, mm-hmm. and just then just bang my head against the keyboard like yep. it's just not happening i'm gonna get frustrated writing something that is three quarters as good as it would be yeah yeah, yeah. it just it would be too forced and everything so yep. try to Try to find the balance where anything you do when you're sitting in there and you want inspiration and don't have it. Like what's that uh, inspiration hunting process that um, or does it even happen? The, it I kind of like I'll, I'll, I'll listen to music mm-hmm. in those moments, which I'm like hesitant to say because I don't want it to sound like I'm like listening to sure. I need to steal an idea. Like yeah, just yeah. something to whether just maybe hear a drum beat or mm-hmm. just a tempo idea, just something to get it going. Or like if it's lyrics, then. I like doing like movies, Mm -hmm. like just look for some kind of thing, just some kind of imagery, just something. 
You start trying whatever. Like you start getting frustrated. <laughs> Where's the spark? And then you start trying things. Like yeah, I want to get going, but it just yeah. doesn't always happen. I've found that same thing. Of just like find something that makes me happy, and it doesn't matter what that thing is. It could be like I have find myself going to comedy, just dumb. Like find a minute video that makes me laugh and just watch that. Like it's totally yeah, yeah. irrelevant, but somehow just like getting good juices flowing is good to make other good juices. Yeah, flow. you'll never know what. Like that's something. Like I don't even think you have to sit and like watch movies mm-hmm. like to get inspired. Like you can just. Something could just happen day to day. It's always and that. You'll yeah. get an idea, and you yeah. would have never thought it. But mm-hmm. and that's where and that's where yeah. like we gotta go outside <laughs> like, to yeah. to get those situations, to get those ideas. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's all it's very tricky. Like the motivation, all that kind of stuff. It's exactly that for me. Yeah, I don't watch movies, but when I I was watching Lacrosse the other night, and there was the the scoreboard came up in a way, and the way the animation happened, I was like, oh. And like the, the dot, it's like, I'm not making an ESPN scoreboard. For, like, that's not at all relevant to what I'm doing. But yeah, it was enough. It was um, something that got something going. You mm-hmm. never know where you're going to find it. Yep. Like it's, or, it's cool. uh, my other favorite was we were watching like an illegal stream of the fights. And the fights were like like remixing is what we call it. Where it's just like stutters in the same frame. Oh, yeah, And like yeah. the way the frame broke, I was like, oh, fuck. I need to make that. And I spent the whole like, <laughs> next day like figuring out how this thing broke. And trying to, like, I love that stuff, though. Because that's the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. you, so wherever you apply that to, like you have a story for that now and yeah. you can trace that thing all the way back to a yep. a skipping a buffering fight thing which is yes. sick like it's just stuff like that it's yeah. so random like and and those that's are always the best projects the most successful ones where it just happened because it was like oh this this has to happen like it wasn't uh i guess the cliche phrase like it wasn't even my choice it was something that flowed through me that just had to get out of me Some, they just things just come together sometimes yeah it's almost like um, effortless sometimes yeah. sometimes it's a horrible slog <laughs> to get through but then sometimes things just go and those are the best yeah and i think maybe that's the one uh flip side or one benefit to being in a band is that there isn't always a deadline as in an amateur band yeah that's one no, thing that i try yeah. and grapple with is like it's due friday and like that would and, stress me out yeah a lot it's it's been surprisingly freeing for me i i i think if i wasn't me i would agree that it seems stressful <laughs> but for me it's freeing because it's like uh it has to be done. Like there's no, there's no room for me to sit there and go, Oh, I don't quite have it today. Or, uh, well, maybe tomorrow might like, I don't know. There's no room for that bullshit. It's like, no, you sit down and do it. And there is still the burnout of like, Nope, today is absolutely no, not the day. But, but that, but, that like, that is the attitude that like yeah. combats those times where yeah. it might not be burnout. It just, you just need to be like, no, mm-hmm. you're sitting here and you're fucking doing this right now. And yep. yeah. And then so it, it goes yeah. like, especially and, with the deadline too, you yep. have no choice, but like, yeah, it does it, it helps keep you kind of just for me on yeah. track yeah, yeah yeah and it's something it's some some way to know when the project is done to me i think i i hear, often hear bands talk about just like oh. the perfectionism thing of just they're always tweaking and it's like i can't like i i i do my best like if it's due friday i try and have it done tuesday so that wednesday i forget about it thursday i can wake up and watch it and you have like, some time to sit on it yeah, yeah i yeah. try and budget that in and of course it's not always possible but i do my best to make that happen and normally it does um and that allows me some forgiveness but it means that like I get 24 hours. That's it. I don't, yeah, I can't come back in two months. And I know as musicians, there's always that thing. And even more so you get paralyzed by fear. So you end up trying to make your oh, third yeah. song perfect. And it's like, your third song is going to suck. <laughs> it's about getting to song 20. Like I, I talk often here about getting to episode 100. And it's exactly that. It's like, I, I love what I'm doing. I believe in what I'm doing. But I also believe that by episode 75, you're going to look back at right now and be like, yo, I suck. I was <laughs> fucking something up. What, I don't know what that thing is. If I knew what it was, I'd fix it right now. But like, yeah, I didn't think with bands is the same thing of like you just can't get caught in this like this cycle. There has to be some deadline, and for me with the the video, it's been very freeing of like, yep, has to go out. The project yeah, has to go out. The EP yeah. has to be done. There's no question. That is a, probably like a peace of mind to that because yeah. like that. I guess the only thing like we have with with that is recording. Mm-hmm. It's like once it's tracked and we leave, like that's yes. it. Yeah. So I'll I'll be like in the studio like day of vocals like tweaking yeah. lyrics just right to the the bitter end it's yep. like because it is like it's yeah. so hard to call something done because you yeah. never like an idea a new idea could pop up at any time but then at a certain yep. point it's done i heard yeah. wisdom that uh most things are done at 80 percent, and I, i've really liked it it's really been a freeing thing of like doesn't mean quit early doesn't mean stop but it means that like the last 20 percent of what you're working on doesn't change how people are going to perceive and consume this thing like those little uh in audio oftentimes in my brain it's the mix notes of like you're changing the snare tone one little tiny smidgen that like matters 
but when everyone hears the song, they're going to hear the lyrics and the guitar and like in the yeah. big picture, it's not worth a month of your time to get right. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'll, it'll, it'll be like a, a one word thing for me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do I say the or is? Yeah. And it's <laughs> like, nobody fucking cares. Just yeah. like, just, just go in there and record it now. Yeah. Like it's too much stress over the little things, but yeah. That's where I yeah. like that 80% thing of like, no, that by the time good. you were to the, or, uh, the song was done, <laughs> yeah. like it yeah. was done. Yeah. Whatever, they were going to love it or hate it, and it wasn't going to be because of this syllable. <laughs> yeah. Um, hell yeah, man. That feels like a good place to leave off cool. right at our hour mark. Mission accomplished, dude. Yeah, uh, we touched on great. it a little bit earlier. Uh, where can people find you online? What uh, So we got Anthem's new EP, or Anthem's EP. It's been out for four months now. It is still, I guess, technically also new. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the EP is called... Northeast disease. Hell yeah. Yep. It's available all platforms. Uh, yes. Anthem is available online. Uh, we have a, a big cartel. You can find us. I don't have the URL, but um, anthemspan at gmail.com or yeah. anthemspan on Instagram, anthems Facebook. We have Twitter or X now, I guess, whatever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I still have Twitter too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to call it X, but I ref- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's and a fun one. That's another easy one to spend ten minutes <laughs> yeah, talking know, about yeah, with everyone else. So when does the pendulum swing on you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. Well, we'll yeah. get into that often. Yeah, thanks, but, uh, for, yeah. thanks for coming this through. This is great. Mission accomplished.